Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma Givens. I am a copywriter, brand messaging strategist, and writing coach for small business owners like you. So welcome. If you're interested in copywriting, content marketing, or mental health for entrepreneurs, then please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell below as well so that way you never miss a video. All right, so today is going to be a super casual video where we're going to talk about your client's success stories. And what I mean by that is actually knowing where they were before you started working together or before they bought your product, how the experience was when you worked together or when they made use of your product, and then what the benefits have been after. What have the results been that are so awesome and beyond even what they might have imagined to begin with? So first off, I want to distinguish that this is different than a testimonial. A testimonial is, in their words, basically that they liked working with you, right? It's, I would recommend you to somebody else. A really great testimonial can also incorporate pieces of their client success story, but most people aren't going to know to write it that way. It would basically be you writing up the testimonial you want them to say and asking if they approve it, if you really wanted it to embody all the different benefits of the client success story that we're about to get to. So typically it's not the testimonial itself. This is the story behind the testimonial. And some different ways that you can keep track of the story are at the very beginning, the genuine beginning of the story, like when you have a sales call with them or they fill out an intake form, ask them a question about what brought them to you? Why did they come and ask for your help? What have they been struggling with the most? And what are they most looking forward to you getting your help on? That gives you a sense of, okay, this was the step one. This is where they began. This is what they couldn't tolerate anymore. And this is why they came to me. If you didn't do it at the time, you can always go back, especially to clients that you've maintained a really nice relationship with. And you can ask them even to fill out a little survey that's going to be asking them the beginning, middle and end questions that we're sharing. So in the beginning question, basically ask them that. What were you struggling with before we started working together? Or why did you come to me in the first place? Something along those lines. Another way, if it's not like a client, but more a customer who purchased a product from you, is if they are really a fan client, like there's a way for you to contact them, maybe via DM or you know what their email address is and you're allowed to email them. Depends also on that. Um, you can always ask them, right? Ask them why it was interesting to them in the first place. Why did they buy more than one piece, right? What were they struggling with beforehand? How has it helped them? Those kinds of questions you can have in a conversation. And if you can, I would really strongly recommend doing this in a place like direct messages on Instagram because it gives you an opportunity to build that relationship. And they usually, I mean, a lot of businesses that we buy from on a daily basis are massive right? And that's very impersonal. Whereas you are a real human being and you can say that in the message, right? Like this is Emma sending you a message. I've noticed that you've bought a couple of the items from my latest collection and I'm so excited that you're just as thrilled about them that I am or as I am. So can you let me know what was it that attracted you to them in the first place? I think that that's an opportunity to build a connection with them. So try finding out the answer, even if you didn't or you couldn't as a product-based business owner at the true beginning of their story. Ask them to recall it, ask them to reflect on it and share it with you. The middle of the story is probably going to be a bit easier because it really describes what the experience was like working with you or maybe the first time they used your product, right? They might talk about this in the testimonial. You can also ask this in a survey question, right? You can, in the beginning, middle, end questions, the middle question can be about what did you most enjoy about working together, that sort of thing. And you can also ask them, about the first time I would recommend, the first time that they use your product, because that's when they really see that change, right? Like, oh, finally, it's easy for me to get up and down the stairs again. <laughs> if it's like an acorn chairlift, which is one of my favorite products in the world, and I've always wanted to try one. So that is a really simple part, usually because especially if you're a coach or a service-based business owner as well, you're getting active feedback from them, or you should be if you're looking to make it a great experience, right? So they're probably sharing with you on a regular basis. Oh, I love this part of the way that we're working together. Or I never thought about it that way before. That's already made a big difference just as I implemented it, that sort of thing. So that's in the middle section done. Now the end is the results even beyond working together or having your product. So let's say that you are in a service-based business. You can always check in on your clients in a week's time. If you maintain that relationship, you could check in with them in a month's time and actually see what the long-term return on investment is. And I don't just mean that if you serve other business owners and it's a monetary return on investment. It could also be if you are a health coach and they're actually seeing long-term results in their health. So maybe their levels of something <laughs> in their body have continued to go down and that's what you, they needed to do to be more 
more healthy. And you can also, for product-based businesses, you can ask them about what that experience has been like long-term. Like, is it still in the same great shape it was when they first got it? How do they feel about it today? Are they just as excited as day one? At this point, has it made such an impact on them that they bought a second for a friend? There's a lot of different ways for both services and product-based businesses to realize and to be able to show to future audiences, to future clients, how that experience of working together has resulted in benefits beyond the immediate. So something that really has transformed their life long-term, either by making them happier, healthier, whatever that transformation is that you give through service or through your products. And so those are really the three parts of a simple client success story. So the beginning, middle, and end, where they were before you started together, what the experience of working together was like in the moment, and what were the results even beyond the last day of working together or even beyond the initial purchase of the product. How has that continued to this day? There's so many ways to use this. You can tell these stories on social media and really build up that expert image, build up trust, because they're yes, you're the one telling the story, but it's an experience they're able to share with them, especially if you can accompany it with a testimonial, right? So you, they can see that some real person actually put the effort into saying, hey, my client's success story was so great that I recommend you also work with them. Like that is so compelling. So super, super helpful. That's a really, really great way of creating great social media content. It can also lead into sales emails. So you can write one of your sales emails in a launch sequence can be this client success story. Plus again, I think it really fortifies it having a testimonial in there as well. And then you tack on the offer to the end of it. Want results like Lisa? Then also join me this round of my course, that sort of thing. All right. So I hope that that clarifies what this category of content is about, the client success story. It's super helpful and actually super underutilized. A lot of people don't bake this into how they ask questions when they have new clients. They also don't have an offboarding <laughs> sequence where they actually ask them the question of what was our experience like together? And then a few months time, ask them what has the long-term benefits been? It's just not something that's on a lot of people's minds, but this can be such a powerful copy technique, right? So it's really important that you gather this information and I just would say that the key is before you share it, do ask if it's okay. <laughs> so either see if you can like use a pseudonym or simply a first name. If they're okay with it, maybe they're just going to be okay with it with a tweak so that there's nothing that's overly private or sensitive that you're sharing. Just be really sure, just like with a testimonial, you'd have their blessing to use it. Make sure you also have their blessing to share the story. All right. I hope you found that tip really, really useful. I'm excited to learn about your client success stories in the comments below. Tell me someone you helped, how you helped them, and how that is helping them long term, right? So it's basically the beginning, middle, and end. Who is the person that came to you and why? How did you help them? And what have the results been? I'm going to be so excited to learn about what you do in your business and maybe even to go check out the work that you do. And I'm sure other entrepreneurs who are here in the comments will be excited to do so as well. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe and hit the little notification bell so you never miss a video. And remember, your voice matters. Set it free. All right. See you next time. Bye.